With no further ado, it's time to bring out our first of the valedictorian speakers. Mr. Jacob Karras, attending Mercer College next year. just say a few words, I'd be a better public speaker. While we are here today at this time-honored tradition that is graduation, we should all take time to thank people that help us get this far in life. First of all, I would like to thank my mother for always supporting me. She's behind, been behind me 100% of the way in all my pursuits in life. I would also like to thank my father for always being there for me, from coaching baseball teams and always having to spend a time with me. But besides thanking people, we should take this opportunity to reflect on the good and the bad, the beginnings and the endings. For life is a continuous cycle of beginnings and endings, starts and finishes. Cycles like ducks flying south every winter. You see, ducks fly south when they feel the rise in the barometric pressure. And pressure is something we all must overcome in life. It's like my father always said to me, Hey, you, get out of the way of the TV. Oh, no, wrong quote. No, my father always said, pressure turns some things to dust, but it turns coal to diamonds. And we should all strive to be like coal in how we handle pressure, but not like coal in energy production. For as we speak, California is running low on energy, and they're forced to have blackouts. So we should look to supplement the coal power with solar energy. Yeah. Got it. This solar energy comes from the sun, and the sun, as we all know, is the king of the planets. Now, there can only be one king, and as there can only be one, you should always look out for number one, but don't step in number two. Speaking of number two, our second speaker tonight is Chris McRae. Chris is a Virgo. He likes long walks on the beach and will be attending the University of South Florida this fall. Thank you. Out of the night that covers me, black as the pit from pole to pole, I thank whatever gods may be for my unconquerable soul. In the fell clutch of circumstance, I have not winced nor cried aloud. Under the bludgeonings of chance, my head is bloody but unbowed. Beyond this place of wrath and tears looms but the horror of the shade. And yet, the menace of the years finds and shall find me unafraid. It matters not how straight the gate, how charged with punishment the scroll. I am the master of my fate. I am the captain of my soul. I'd like to dedicate this poem, Invictus, by William Ernest Henley to the class of 2001, especially those last two lines. And I'd like to ask everybody here tonight to think about those two lines and what they mean and how they apply. Because they apply to everybody and to everything. Think about how they apply to you and to everything that you've ever done with your life and everything that you'll ever do with your life. And especially think about how they apply to everything that you are doing with your life. And then say to yourself, I am the master of my fate. I am the captain of my soul. I'd like to introduce the next valedictorian to speak, Kanal Segal, and he'll be attending the University of Miami next year. Thank you. To be honest, I was pretty nervous about speaking at such a momentous occasion. But as I sat on stage and looked at the faces of my fellow graduates, my nerves were instantly calmed. With each face, I recalled a certain image, instance, or situation that has taken place 
over the past 12 years. Whether it was playing soccer during recess in elementary school, or that strange class called impact during middle school, each of you have affected my life in one way or another. And as I reflect, I realize what graduation is truly about. It's not about who gets to wear pieces of rope around their necks and makes a big speech in front of everyone. It's about the friendships that we have made during our time together. And though it may seem that all the ties and bonds that we have worked so hard to keep are soon to break, this is not true. After today, we travel in our separate directions, but that does not mean that we start over. We leave with the comfort of knowing that we have friendships that will last a lifetime, even if our time together will not. I would also like to especially thank my family, because I cannot imagine ever being able to come this far without all of their love and support. Also, I would like to thank my deepest, I would like to send my deepest gratitude to Mr. Shaker Setupati, whom without it would be impossible for me to be on this stage today. He's not here with us anymore, and that's why he's not here today. But I guess that's just because the best of us go first. Just as I will never forget him for everything he has done for me, I will never forget any of you for all the memories that we share. Thank you. And now I'd like to introduce our next valedictorian who is following my lead to the University of Miami, Young Moon. I spent the last two weeks worrying about what I'd say tonight, and I put pressure on myself to write a speech that would be inspirational and be memorable for everyone. But after careful consideration, I decided that that was not important. I came to the conclusion that I should thank my family, friends, and the faculty that helped me reach my goals. They pushed me to work harder, they pushed me to work harder and become a better person. I also concluded that I spent the last four years working hard and making lifelong friends. We remember the things that we'll never be able to do again. We can't go back and relive meeting in the halls to talk to your friends or even the senior prom. Today is the last day in which we truly feel like seniors in high school. We have reached a point in our lives where we must make a choice. This decision was easy for some, while others had to think long and hard. Most of us will go off to college, but some will go straight to work. But whatever path you take, there's nothing stopping you from reaching all your goals and making a difference in the world. So now, I'd like to leave you with these words by Robert Frost. Two roads diverged in a yellow wood, and I, I took the one less traveled by, and that has made all the difference. And now, I'd like to introduce Kyle Rapier, who will be attending the University of Florida. Well, we finally made it. This is the culmination of 12 years of blood, sweat, and tears. I know we've all looked forward to this day, and it's finally arrived. We have many people to, thank, to be thankful for, for helping us get to this point. First of all, we should be thankful to our parents, without whose love and support we would not have arrived here. I know my parents spent many hours helping me with school projects, and I'm sure as yours did too. Our parents have guided us, loved us, nurtured us, and cared for us, and at times yelled at us to make sure we turned out to be caring, responsible adults. I think they've done a good job. We should also be thankful for all the great teachers we've had, both here at Dr. Phillips and throughout our whole education. Teachers have a hard job and are not always properly appreciated. So I'd like to thank all of them on, on behalf of the class of 2001. As this part of our lives ends and the next phase begins, it's a time to reflect on the great times we've had at Dr. Phillips, but to also look ahead. I'm excited about starting college and moving off. I know some of you may have different plans, but changes are in store for all of us. I think Dr. Phillips has prepared us well for the future. So look back with fond memories, but look ahead with great excitement as we look at the opportunities that await each and every one of us. And now I'd like to introduce Tori Haberkamp, who will be attending American University.
In life, we will come to many crossroads where we will have to choose our next path, to walk or to run, to follow the path well-worn or the path less traveled, to move forward or backward or not to move at all. These will be our decisions. Now, in this moment, we are at a crossroads. Some of us will go to work, some to school. Others will serve our country in the armed forces. Some of us will remain at home, while others will move out and begin to make their own lives. The class of 2001 has great potential. We will shape our destinies and influence the world. As we continue to find ourselves at crossroads, seeking for a path to follow, we must remember that not all paths are visible and not all have been traveled before. We, the class of 2001, are the leaders of the future. We must make our own way. We must go where there is no path and leave a trail. The world is waiting for us. Our next valedictorian is Jamita Nathu, who will be attending the University of Florida. First and foremost, I would like to thank my dad, who has been my inspiration, and my mom, whose infinite wisdom and support have seen me through some difficult times. They started me on the path to success, and I never would have come this far without their constant and unconditional love. Secondly, I would like to address the teachers. On behalf of our entire class, thank you. Thank you for leading us, teaching us, and building us up as adults. And finally, to my fellow graduates, as Winston Churchill said at the turning point of World War II, this is not the end. It is not even the beginning of the end, but it is perhaps the end of the beginning. Through the past 12 years, we overcame obstacles, we learned, we grew strong in faith, and matured in understanding. And now, after 12 years of friendships, experiences, memories, and education, we are, embarking, we are embarking on a new journey in life to pursue our dreams and aspirations. This new journey will essentially offer us new worlds to discover and new dreams to explore. And since today, our graduation day marks the commencement of our new journey, I would like to end my speech with this final thought. Always shoot for the moon. Even if we miss, at least we'll land among the stars. And now I would like to introduce my friend, Jennifer Anderson, who will also be attending the University of Florida. Last year, my best friend's mother was diagnosed with stage four ovarian cancer. No one was sure if she would be here tonight for her daughter's graduation, but she is. And I'd like to thank her, because she has shown me and everyone that knows her how much, how you need to have faith in yourself, faith in God, and to make your days here on earth really count. Some of the seniors here, myself included, may not have embraced each day with excitement to face the challenges but we have another chance as we start this new chapter in our lives. This poem summarizes what I have learned from my friend's mother and what I think all the graduates should consider. If there is ever a time to dare, to make a difference, to embark on something worth doing, it is now. Not for any grand cause necessarily, but for something that tugs at your heart, something that's your dream. You owe it to yourself to make your days here count. Know, though, that things worth doing seldom come easy. There will be good days, and there will be bad days. Persist, because with an idea, determination, and the right tools, you can do great things. Let your instincts, your intellect, and your heart guide you. The start of something new brings the hope of something great. Anything is possible. There is only one you, and you pass this way only once so do it right. Now I'd like to introduce Sylvain Montsier, who will be attending Georgetown University. Wow. 
After four years, this is it. A landmark, a new beginning. And as we venture out for the first time, we will build our characters, shape our identities, and discover ourselves. This will determine who we are and how we will forge into the future. And as we establish our values and our beliefs, we must remember to remain true to ourselves. And this is going to be difficult because often individual principles are neglected because of societal influence. So we're faced with this challenge to remember who we are and what we stand for. Often we hear that society is measured by the amount of material wealth we can amass. But this is not the case. True success comes from finding happiness in our lives, a happiness that can only be realized by keeping God in our hearts, by making people a priority, and by remaining true to ourselves. And there will come a day when we will all have to select the things of true importance in our lives. And in making these decisions, I hope we will remember this above all, to thine own self be true. And now I'd like to introduce my good friend, Dinah Fry, who will be attending Brown University. nowhere, hit you when you're safe and warm. Take it easy, my star. Your time is going to come. Your time is going to come. I chose this quote to begin my speech, not only because it comes from a song by my favorite band, but also because it truly expresses the sadness and hopefulness that are my feelings about graduation. I still can't believe that my four years at Dr. Phillips are over, and the idea that in a few short months, I will be leaving my parents' house, my home, is mind-woggling. I owe so much to my family and my friends. They have been inconceivably supportive and have always made me feel safe and warm. When I think about not being able to see them every day, I start to question my decision to go away to school, and I get nervous that I won't make it without them right beside me. But then I remember that even though they won't be right next to me, they will always be behind me, supporting me. And I have to be brave and take hold of those opportunities they help place before me. I hope with all my heart that each graduate, including myself, finds the strength needed to move on into this next phase of our lives and to achieve the great things I know we are each capable of. We have already succeeded by being here today and with the continued support of those who have helped us come this far, and with our own hard work and dedication, our times will surely come. And if you ever feel yourself getting anxious or doubtful, I urge you to remember what my dad told me before I gave this speech. No matter how scary they look, they can't eat you. Thank you.